The Comic Art Price Guide. This is the second edition, and this is by Jerry Vice, who died in 2011. This is the second edition. I've also got the third edition, which is slightly heavier, and you can see slightly bigger as well. They're, well, obviously some of the information is going to be the same, but there's an awful lot of examples that are definitely not the same. Many of the, so if you go to each section, the example they choose, not the same at all, So which is great. So I'm just going to go through both, but uh, actually I'll go through this one first. However, actually, if I do any of them, I'll show you this one. This is a similar sort of thing, obviously not exactly the same, but the Heritage comic, these, of course, full of lots of great examples as well. Really worth checking it. You can see some of the, obviously, the covers and various things, Tales of Suspense, Weird Fantasy, etc. So they're also quite good. I've got a few other price guide sort of things, but nothing of comic art, as far as I'm aware. This is the third edition. Now, this one came out in 2011. This is obviously Jerry Vice as well. And... It's slightly different coverage. This one has got a lot of things like pulp magazines, underground comics, monster mags, as well as uh, fanzines and science fiction. Now this covers a little bit of that, but not as much. This is more the artwork, illustrations, etc. It's really comic books more than that. So I will show you that as well. But it's got lots of adverts at the start, which are always great. People are asking for wanting this and wanting that. Obviously there's... Uh, yeah, Jerry Vice, like so, you died in 2011. You've got here the contents. There are there's contents. That's probably the best thing to show the contents. You've got uh, all the various details there. And that's quite an interesting one. Lloyd Jacket, I don't know how to say that. Estate Discovery of Original Art. Also, New Fun, obviously the DC first comic. So you've got that. And also, Original Comic Book Art, Original Comic Art, Painting Restoration, and etc. So there's a lot. Oh, Science Fiction and Pulp Art. There's a little bit. But it's not as much. There's about about 550 odd pages, 570 odd pages in this one, and it's a lot bigger. And there's lots and lots more examples. So you've got I love this sort of thing. You've got details here about timely. You've also got about things like Toby Press comics, as well as the other ones, Superior and Ajax. I remember quite a lot of these ones. Fiction House comics, National comics, obviously Harvey comics, and so on and so on. And you've got about EC Comics, the uh, collection there, and you've got original art lost in, oh, lost in a fire, apparently. Oh, I didn't realise that they were all lost in like, all those covers. Oh, dear. House ads, everything like that. Anyway, lots and lots of pictures there. You've got also, and then lots and lots of examples. Lots of newspaper strips. Some I've heard of, some I sort of vaguely know of. Of course, many of these never turned up in the UK, so I'm certain they're very popular in the States. But uh, over here, probably not so many. And you've got lots of examples, as well as the prices and information about the uh, various strips as well. So you've got there the strips, who drew it and all those sort of things, I guess. Yes, and also the obviously the company, United Feature Syndicate. Again, more examples there. This is just full of great things like Garfield. You've got here uh, 1981 to present. It tells you the prices for those. 1977 to present for the uh, Sunday strips, etc. Of course, it's 2011, obviously 11 years ago now. It's probably changed completely. I, I have no idea. I haven't seen a recent price guide. So, uh, but again, this, I bought this book mainly not for the price guide particularly, but for obviously the information. This is great. But also the examples as well. And also the essays, of course, that are just great. I actually picked this up. I think it was pound. It was a pound at the, the Comic Mart. One of those sort of ones you think, oh, you know what? That's just sitting there. No one wants that. I'll have that for a pound, definitely. And it's just because it's just full of brilliant artwork. Why not? And this one, Lightning Comics. Texas Kid. No idea. Captain Fortune. I'm certain there must Texas Kid. There must be loads of ones called Texas Kid. It's that sort of thing. Texas. Who knows? Whirlwind Comics. And there's also many. And Target Comics. I love all this stuff. Look at it. I mean, just beautiful. All these lovely. Uh, now, you can get those in like Heritage Auction catalogues. I love those as well. I've got. A fair number of those. And it's just for, I love this, new comics. I love those sort of new, the new comics, the DC one. We've also got to here, Don't Turn Your Back on Bill, Bull McGinney. I must admit, I can't remember that one, the Sergeant Fury one. I don't know which it doesn't actually, does it say? Oh, 22. Oh, I'm surprised I can't say I've seen that one. Anyway, probably, probably read it and just given much thought to that one. But anyway, feature comics. I love all those quality comics ones. Just great. Black Hawk. you just got example after example after example. That's what's just great about these sort of books. Just beautiful. Uh, Barry Windsor Smith, that one. Conan 14. 
just a classic. I think that was Elric, the Elric story. Drums, bones. And then you got, of course, about the artist as well, which is just great. I, Chris Bacalow. I love Chris Bacalow. Great work. Just brilliant. I love, like, Doctor Strange and Generation X. There was some just, well, maybe not everyone's cup of tea, but I, I love that work. Mort, Mort Drucker there. Kevin Eastman. And it's, of course, got lots and lots of detail about all these artists. A little bit of information about them. More, obviously, about the various, right? Uh, Gray Morrow. And many, many others. So let's just go through. Now, there's not, obviously, so much of all the pictures and examples. But you've got some science fiction at the back. Let's just go a few more. The Clutch of Vampires, 1974. I thought that was an old book. The way it looked, it looked, I thought, oh, that's a Victorian sort of thing, but they've obviously done it. an anthology. Isaac Asimov's The Currents of Space. I remember reading that years and years and years ago. I think it's in my local charity shop I saw recently. They've always seemed to have piles and piles of Asimov that turn up. And I think, oh, maybe I should buy those and reread them again. I haven't read them for yonks. Science fiction and pulp art listing. Now, didn't I say... The second edition has probably I've got Frank Rosetta there. Again, the price is oh, they're quite high actually here. Conan paperback paintings. I'm certain that's probably five or ten, whatever times more than that now. However, ooh, this is a bit lighter. <laughs> Believer it and some mariner. Now, when I got this this morning, I only got it today I, because I've. I really enjoyed that one. I love that third edition. I thought, you know what, I must get the second edition. So I ordered it, and um, well, I'm really pleased to got this one because it's just great for. However, there's nothing, nothing about um, Submarine or Bill Everett particularly. I mean, there's no, there's no articles or anything. So strange. I just thought, oh, that's. You've got obviously some good details there, acknowledgements, special. I don't know if there's an index here. Uh, it probably is somewhere. Maybe not. Key advantages of CGC. Of course, you've got some great uh, genre meter there. And some more information about Silver Age artworks, collecting pulp art magazines, all the various things. I love all, like, all the prices and things. It's got all about EC. If you're into EC comics, this sort of thing is just great because you read about it and you think, wow, that one. Lots of people probably say, oh, I wish I bought that. Science fiction magazines or fanzines. Don't think anyone's got a copy of the ones I did, science fiction fanzines. When I was at university, did um, science fiction fanzine. <laughs> well, it was good. Actually, there were some good stories and articles. I, don't, I think, don't think my stuff was very good. Did some of the illustrations and things for it. Hopefully there's no copies whatsoever. I haven't got my copies of it anymore anyway. Maybe someone has, I don't know. So that one will never be preserved. However, preservation and storage of comic art, underground comics, etc. And when I'm reading this, I'm thinking, I think I've done everything wrong, keeping my comics and books and things. Hold on. I also got about Superman here as well, which is a really good, really lovely section about Superman. And then again onto newspapers. And as I said, the examples that are in here are different from the book, the other book. They're not the same. So if you go through it and think, oh, you know what, Batman, it, I, I might be wrong, but I think that I've been going through it, comparing them, and most, I just can't find any that are the same. So you've got Batman there, you've got Batman again there, lots of great examples, but it's not as many as the third one. So if you're getting it and thinking, you know what, it's going to be as packed solid of examples as the third one, it's not the case. But it's still got full of tons and tons of information. Now, whether the information is the same there, because of course, I'm certain things like male, cool, or little women, etc. There's probably only going to be a limited amount of things you can say, syndicated by King's Features. How strange. They all seem to be King's Features, don't they? King's Features and little Sammy Sneeze, those sort of things. I'm certain people will not put vast amount of information about that. But you've got Prince Valiant, of course, classic. I just love that. Just Hal Foster there. And many other. Some I know, obviously Popeye. Everyone knows Popeye. Wee Pals, When I Was Short. 1989, well. And of course, then into some brilliant artwork. Neil Adams, of course, sadly died. And I love that one. However, always slightly disappointing. It's a recreation again. I mean, fine, it's, a, it's wonderful, but at the same time, especially the original doesn't still exist. I've got the original comic, but uh, not the original artwork. Now, that would be something. And also you've got here, War War Against Crime. Absolutely lovely. And I assume, that, yes, their cover artwork, then they are the original. Sold for, and it, actually not too much. Not excessive. Reasonable price. Especially it's 2000. It's only, only 20, 22 years. 22 years. Of course it's 22 years. But it's, uh, yeah, I'm, Oh no, this was sort of, there's me misreading it. Sold in 1996. Well, of course, I need to gain another 
four years before that, and that's one thousand odd dollars for a war against crime. Wow, Johnny Gray, I love it. Just absolutely saddle justice. So you've got lots again, another brilliant example there. And this is what I love about this. I also got, and I haven't got any now. Lots of the old Russ Cochran books. He had a catalogue auction or whatever it was called. And uh, they were always quite impressive. And quite often they would put the story as well. So you'd actually have all the pages. Very small. So you had to have magnifying glass. I never worry about it. If it's, it could be two inches. And that would be it. I'm, I'd still sit there and try and read it. But it, they had all that tiny tots and land of the lost. And those sort of things. They were just great. And this is the sort of thing that's always great. You could always read these stories. And again, classic, of course. Dr. Doom there. Doomsday! Good old Doomsday, he's just obviously got the powers of the Silver Surfer and uses them, obviously, for the best services of mankind, as he usually did. And the unbelievable Purple Man, good old Kilgrave. I love that. Private Soul, ooh, that's not bad either. Not bad. Some of the, some of the prices, I mean, now must be absolutely insane for that sort of early. Little Lulu, you've got Doctor uh, Strange there, obviously Nick Fury as well, Jim Starling one. Ooh, 97. See, some of these are quite good. I mean, you got here Thanos and Thing, Warlock, etc. Covers, you know, 500, $500. The trouble is, of course, whenever I look at these, these are in dollars, but also you, most of them probably available only in the States or very easily accessible. And that's always an issue. So when you see it, you think, oh, that's great. But living in the UK, it's a bit trickier to bring them back into the country. Obviously you have to, but, uh, but it uh, does, of course, add additional costs to do it. And you've got their lovely, I love Virgil Finlay. Just brilliant. I really wish they'd bring out a book. I'm just surprised. I mean, there's there's loads of Finnish books. Finnish, if that's what. About 200 pages, 150 pages. But there's never been a really comprehensive, super wonderful, massive collection of his work. And I love Virgil Finlay's work. I think it's just absolutely amazing science fiction. But I've never seen any real... There was going to be one at one time. There was I saw a listing for, and I thought, "Oh, that'd be brilliant." Never turned up. Never existed. As far as I can see, which is so sad. However, John Campbell there. I don't know who's that. Oh, Malcolm Smith book cover. And you've got Jim. Oh, oh wow. Got Strang going there as well. Pulp price guide. And again, this has got lots and lots of things. Of course, lots of these price. They're always fascinating. I love pulps as well. I mean, the story is generally okay. <laughs> That's the best description I can say. Some are good. Some of the crime ones are great. They still hold up quite well. Some of the science fiction ones. I mean, I love reading before the golden age or whatever, those sort of things. But they're not the world's greatest stories. you also got Monster Mags as well. I know they're amazingly popular as well. Fangora. I've never particularly collected them. I must admit, occasionally I would buy them. But, but you've got lots of examples here. Horrors of the screen. I mean, this is just like I say, this book is just brilliant for information about things. House of Horror, Hammer's British, obviously a British one, Gore Creature, Fanzine, 1963, Help, Anniversary Issue. And so, I mean, just full of, I don't know what this is. Oh, these must be fanzines. So you've got all underground comics. You've got science fiction fanzines as well. And like I say, probably my one is definitely not in here. I'm certain it was not. I'd be very surprised if it was. Oh, they've got Locus, of course. That's uh, quite a fun. Log of the USS Enterprise. You've got uh, Wanted Comic Book Art and all the adverts at the end. It's just an absolutely lovely book. I love this. So you've got two. Now, I assume, because this is the second edition and the third edition, there is a first edition. I'm not certain. That I couldn't find a copy, personally. But uh, maybe I might, might have been searching for the wrong title or something. But I just couldn't find it. But... Uh, Anyway, I think these are absolutely worth checking out and uh, they're both equally brilliant. I love them. Absolutely, totally recommended. And also another book by Jerry Vast that I really love, the Ray Bradbury book. You want a brilliant book, Ray Bradbury book is amazing. I can't remember the exact title. It's an illustrated Ray Bradbury or something. And uh, it's just great. And of course, I love these. Totally, totally recommended.